Hello there. I'm Marshall Silver. If you know anything about hypnosis, then you know it's nothing like my scary friend. If you know anything about hypnosis, you realize that hypnosis is a constant state, which means it's not difficult to hypnotize people. It's difficult to bring them out of the trance they walk around in every single day, telling them who they are and who they aren't, what they can be and do and have. I'm coming to you live from my theater at my home on the ocean in Southern California. It wasn't always like this. In fact, I was born into a home that had no running water, no electricity, no phone, often little and sometimes even no food. Twice, my family of nine siblings and myself were completely homeless. It was hypnosis that allowed me to create the lifestyle that I live right now, flying around the world in private jets, multiple homes, and just an amazing lifestyle. And it's the thing I want to talk about in this video for you. How can you hypnotize yourself to instantly take on the programs of a millionaire or multimillionaire, start living that life on purpose, and create some similar results? I want to introduce to you a term called PND, or psycho duplication Quite simply, the technology of PND dictates that when you think what someone thinks, you believe what they believe, you'll automatically take their actions and produce a similar result. When you think what a slender fit person thinks, you'll automatically make slender fit choices. When you think what a millionaire thinks, well, you can't stop the money from coming into your life. The challenge is most people don't realize what millionaires and billionaires think, and it's quite different than what paupers think. Now, for the sake of our discussion, I want to define a millionaire as a person who earns at least $1 million per year net joyfully. The last two parts are extremely important, net and joyfully. The net part means that's what money you have as profit, not how much you grossed. If you know anything about business, you know that you could gross a million dollars and still owe a million more. Uh, joyfully means that you're living a life on your terms, the way that you want to live your life. Meaning, I don't want to show you how to make a ton of money if you're just going to be miserable anyway. So, a millionaire is somebody earning $1 million per year net joyfully. On the other hand, I want to define a pauper as someone not earning a $1 million per year joyfully. Now, you may not like that term or you might not even like that definition because it may make you a pauper. Except the hypnosis that I want to start giving you right now, the programs that I want you to start accepting, is that number one, Making a million dollars per year net joyfully is not difficult. It's different. Secondly, that you indeed deserve to have that level of wealth in your life and that you can make it happen and it's starting right now. First and foremost, how much money you make is always tied to your self-esteem. So when you have a higher value of yourself, you will always create more wealth for yourself because you believe you're worth it. You'll see opportunities you wouldn't see with low self-esteem. You'll take fearless actions and risks that you wouldn't have taken unless you had that level of confidence. So the first thing for you to recognize is you are who you think you are, and you get to choose. I remember when I was a kid and I was struggling. We were searching for Kraft macaroni and cheese money in the couch one day, and I sat down and I said, this is not acceptable. This is not my life. This is not my home. I wanted a different life, and I realized that, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I wasn't supposed to struggle. Maybe that was unnatural. Maybe I was supposed to easily create wealth. Now, it's easy for people to say that, and a lot of people do, and a lot of people, frankly, delude themselves into believing that they can have great wealth if they just will it into their lives. I'm of a firm belief that positive mental attitude without action is downright dangerous. What I mean by that is if you don't take powerful, positive, productive action in the present moment, you're never going to get everything that you want. So the power of a powerful mind is your ability to consistently take action in the present moment toward that which you want. Now, you're not likely to take any action toward what you want unless you absolutely believe that it's possible for you to get what you want. In this case, a million dollars a year. The next thing I want you to understand is in the form of a question. And the question is, who were you on the day that you were born? Were you a pauper that would always struggle to make money? Or were you a multimillionaire whose money had not yet been deposited in your bank account? Think about that for a second. Every millionaire and billionaire who is self-made started with very little or sometimes nothing. Those people built themselves up 
to be those millionaires or billionaires, which means on the day that they were born, they were indeed millionaires and billionaires whose money had not yet been deposited in their bank account. Think about that for a second. Do you think that if you knew that you were a millionaire, if you knew your success was certain, that you would conduct yourself in a different way, that you might take different risks, that you might finally follow through on things, that you might deal with what emerges and never get hung up on the little stuff? I kind of think that you would. <clears throat> would you believe that everything happens perfectly? That cough as an example, your life as an example, the government, the circumstances around you are all a product of reality. They're a product of the world. My experience has been that most people get hung up on little things, and most people put an awfully lot of energy into looking good. Rule number one, program number one, you don't need anyone else's approval or authority. If you don't need anybody else's approval, then you will lose the need to look good, which automatically allows you to innovate because you're not worried about what other people think of you. Ultimately, when you don't worry about what other people think of you, you innovate. Can you imagine being the Wright brothers at a time when everybody said if man were meant to fly, God would have given him wings? And having all those folks on the dunes of Kitty Hawk laughing at you week after week after week as you attempted to make your flying machine fly through the air. And can you believe how much courage it must have taken for those great men to stay focused on their outcome? to be certain that they could accomplish what they were setting out to accomplish, even in the face of ridicule, even in the face of people absolutely telling them it was impossible. Much of your successes are going to occur when everyone around you is saying it's not possible. So it's important to take everything that comes at you as water on a duck's back, to just let it go. I want you to also understand millionaires and billionaires definitely do think differently than paupers, and I'll give you some distinctions right now. Number one, millionaires and billionaires never care how much something costs. All we care about is how much can it make us. In other words, money is math. And when you understand that, nothing is a lot. If I need to invest a million dollars into something that will make me $10 million or $20 million, it's a bargain. Some people say, but I don't have that million dollars to invest. Well, if you've got something, a project, an opportunity, a business that for a million dollars will net back 20 million, don't you think there might be people that would want to invest with you, give you the million dollars in return for half of your company so that they could then take 10 million dollars away for themselves? Millionaires and billionaires never ask how much does it cost, they only care about how much can it make them. Secondly, and this is huge, millionaires and billionaires decide what they want and then decide how to get it. Let me say that again so it sinks in. Millionaires and billionaires determine first, what do they want? And then secondly, how do they get it? Often when a millionaire or a billionaire has a business plan or some desire, they may not have the assets, they may not have the finance, they may not even have the immediate ability to acquire that thing that they want. And yet what they do is determine what they want and then figure out how to get it. Paupers do the exact opposite. They see what they can afford first and then determine what they want. I live in Las Vegas full time. I live in my beach house whenever I can because I love the ocean so much. In Las Vegas, there's a lot of really great thinkers. And certainly one of the people who saved Las Vegas, turned the entire city around, is a man named Steve Wynn. I know you've heard of him. He's the guy that opened up the Mirage and the Bellagio and now owns Wynn and, of course, Encore, his other property in Las Vegas. Steve Wynn, when he looks at a piece of land, doesn't say, oh my gosh, I don't have a billion dollars to build that property. He looks at the property and says, I see a volcano going off every half hour. I see dolphins and white tigers and I, I smell tropical scents in the air. I'm positive this venture is going to win. Now, few people know it. When Steve Wynn opened the Mirage many years ago, he actually had to win, hold $1 million a day, which meant the gamblers in his casino had to lose a $1 million a day just for him to stay in business. Many, many, many very smart people at the time said that his property was doomed. There was no way he could stay in business. As they say, the rest is history. Steve Wynn has gone on to be the great visionary in Las Vegas and completely turned the city around, made it a destination for vacations rather than just for gambling. 
Oftentimes, you'll be faced with ridicule of people saying you can't do what you think you can do. It's essential for you to choose your beliefs in any given moment and recognize it's your beliefs in yourself, it's your idea of who you are that's going to allow you to create the great successes that you deserve. Ponder this for a moment as well. Those that think govern those that labor. When I was a young man, my father was not very kind. In fact, he was downright abusive. He used to tell me every single day that I would never amount to anything, that I was a dirty, rotten, horrible human being who would end up dead or in prison, and that nobody's life was better because I was born. Now I realize that those programs affect a lot of people, and you may have suffered worse. You may not have suffered at all. The bottom line is, though, that most of our programs are done by the time we are eight years old. So if you tell a child that every single day from the time they're born till they're eight years old, it will measure into their life for years and years to come. It took me a long time to realize that that wasn't true. In fact, it made me a drug addict, and it took me a while to get through the addictions. It gave me low self-esteem in my teenage years. I realized, though, at one point, when I became a hypnotist, that those programs were my father's and that those were his pains and not my truths. If you're suffering from programs of people who spoke into your life early on or maybe people that helped you to believe something that you know doesn't help you, I want you to remember this thought. Hurt people hurt people. It's not you that is affected by that unless you allow yourself to be. It's their lives that are affected by spewing out that poison on a constant basis. The other thing, though, is that in my life, I have had an amazing human being who's been with me pretty much since birth. My mom, my amazing, beautiful mom to myself and my nine siblings, struggled her whole life working three jobs to get by, to pay for her family, and to take care of her kids. My mother, whom I love so very, very much, cursed me way worse than my father ever did. And the reason was simple. I protected myself from my father's words because I knew they were hurtful. My mother, that I know loves me very much, I didn't protect myself at all from. And she said something to me that you've probably heard, and maybe you even live by this now. She said, Marshall, work hard, get ahead. Well, if you know anything about life, you know that if you work hard, what you get is more hard work. If you complete a full day's worth of labor in half a day, I promise you, your employer is going to give you another full day's worth of labor for the afternoon. In fact, most people do as little as they possibly can just to keep their jobs. And the challenge with that is they can never be promoted, they can never excel, they can never grow, because they're always in the business of giving as much as they have to and not over-delivering and giving more than they're paid for. Millionaires and billionaires, consistently, we give more than we're paid for. We consistently go above and beyond to be sure that we're giving greater value than we're receiving. Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich talks about this concept, and it's very sound, and yet very few people fully comprehend its power. When you consistently give more than you're paid for, you will consistently get back more than you were supposed to. You work for an employer, you do more than they ask you to, you think for yourself, you be proactive rather than just reactive, you give to the customers more than they ask of you, you over-deliver on anything you're selling. And I promise you, your boss, your customers, all those around you will notice what kind of a person you are, and as you sow, so shall you reap what you plant grows, you'll end up with more abundance than you could possibly know what to do with. And finally... As a person of wealth, as a millionaire and a billionaire, recognize your wealth will always be created by giving value to someone else in a way that's meaningful to them. In other words, it's not about what you want or even about what you want to sell them. It's always about you giving value in a way that's meaningful to the other person so that they want what you're offering and therefore want to give you what you want as well whether it's a sale, whether it's a favor in return, or whether it's continued business. You are totally loved. My name is Marshall Silver, coming to you live from Casa de Millionaire 2 on the coast in Southern California, telling you hypnosis changed my entire life, and I'm glad it's doing the same for you. Until we meet again, happy hypnotics.